We are Team 75, and our project is a non-destructive field robotic biomass 3D scanner sponsored by Dr. Kamel Dodon and the University of Arizona Department of Biosystems Engineering. Our team members include Mohamed Alabdal Bonabi, Sabrina Bachelier, Daniel Jin, Anita Lunde, and Alana Zubler. The objective of this project was to develop an autonomous scanner unit that could estimate the vegetative biomass in one cubic meter using non-destructive optical sensing methods in an agricultural field setting. In this presentation, we will walk you through a description of our project, design choices, and results. Biomass is an important parameter in agriculture for measuring plant health and predicting profits based on crop yield. It is defined as the weight of plant material in a given area. Current methods of biomass estimation can be very time-consuming and involve the destruction of crops, which is not ideal in some cases, such as in the production of rare plants. Our system was designed with Yuli in mind, which is a crop currently being researched as an alternative source of natural rubber. The rubber content is highly dependent on the biomass of the plant, so our system will be a useful tool in managing this crop. For this objective, we focused on three main requirements. Calculating the biomass within a 10% error margin of the real biomass. Automatic operation in an outdoor agricultural field setting. And finally, not damaging the plant. To meet these requirements, we began with research into successful methods for scanning plant volume. Many non-destructive solutions use optical rangefinding, sonar, and photogrammetry. These solutions range from modeling an entire field of crops to creating detailed 3D mesh objects of individual plants. We settled on using scanning LiDAR, which is a laser-based rangefinder that quickly captures a set of polar coordinates about an axis, recording angle based on its rotation and distance using time-of-flight laser pulses. This led our overall design concept to be a robot that straddles a row of crops to scan the plant's outer canopy. Our aim is to accurately measure the volume of a portion of the crop in a way similar to a CT scan, rather than creating a rough surface map of the entire field. The large base pillars allow the robot to separate overgrown crops from below as it moves down the row. The robot has three LiDARs, two mounted at the bottom and one mounted on top, to maximize our robot's view of the plant. In addition, there are two velocity-controlled hoverboard motors that allow us to gather positional readings, and the frame is constructed from aluminum to minimize weight and rust from the outdoor environment. In operation, the robot is controlled by Raspberry Pi, a single board computer that controls and collects point cloud data from the LiDAR units and O-Drive motor controller. The O-Drive is able to control two hoverboard motors at a time, and our design is scalable to accommodate a second O-Drive and two additional motors to implement four-wheel drive. Once a point cloud file is generated on the Pi, it is transferred via USB to an external computer. From there, we use MeshLab and Cloud Compare to remove unrelated points, create a solid mesh of the point cloud data, and calculate the volume of the canopy. Finally, we can calculate the biomass using the volume in a Python script. The requirements for the system must be verified through testing, demonstrations, analyses, and inspections. The most crucial verification is the test for the biomass calculation accuracy requirement, since it will quantify the ability of the system to acquire a reasonable estimation of the biomass while also making use of all subassemblies. This test involves operating the scanner unit in an agricultural field, scanning measured sections of plant canopy, and generating its own estimation of the biomass in that section. This estimation can then be compared to the actual biomass of the plants, which is found by harvesting, drying, and weighing them. Other requirements can be simultaneously verified during this test, such as the operation and outdoor conditions and non-destructive to plant requirements. The data necessary to verify these requirements can be collected or observed while the entire unit is in use. However, before beginning verification acceptance testing, smaller functionality tests will be performed to ensure all electronics are operating properly. We have been able to verify the operation of many electrical components including all LiDAR units, the O-Drive motor control, and the hoverboard motors. The three LiDAR units were successfully integrated with the Raspberry Pi, generating a point cloud text file that was transferred to a computer where the file was loaded into MeshLab and Cloud Compare. In addition, we wrote a Python script to demonstrate hoverboard motor operation and velocity control. We modeled the operation of our frame design and LiDAR units using simulation software and began construction of the frame early in the semester. We machined several components in the frame in the Biosystems Engineering machine shop from raw aluminum bars and tubes and have partially assembled our system up to our own manufacturing limitations. 
We've also prototyped the data processing pipeline to go from a text file of polar coordinates to a transformed three-dimensional point cloud file for volume calculation. However, due to facility limitations, we could not finish building a test rig or implement our LiDAR in a design to make test scans. We did, however, use our software to calculate the volumes of pre-made point clouds, as well as making some manual partial scans of some bushes around campus. We have assembled several documents for our sponsor that outlines the entire system, from its frame design to the processing of our resulting point cloud. We will be providing our sponsor first with a user manual, which lays out instructions for processing the collected data using our software package, as well as the operating and maintenance of the physical frame of the system. Additionally, we will be providing a comprehensive report of our system, including our design requirements, testing procedure, assembly drawings, a software package that includes all the programs used in our system, and the final cost breakdown. Finally, we will assemble our notes and research for our sponsor for their future reference. We were able to overcome many problems throughout the duration of this project, several of which involved software debugging, errors in purchased parts, and complications in machining the frame. One challenge in defining the application of our system required us to completely revise our entire design within the span of one week. Some of the major lessons these issues taught us were be flexible and adaptable under changing circumstances, be good on projects early to allow time for changes, unexpected problems, and mistake corrections, and communicate consistently with other team members, mentors, and the sponsor to ensure clear expectations of responsibilities. We would like to thank Dr. Kamel Dodon and the Department of Biosystems Engineering for generously sponsoring this project and granting us laboratory access and equipment Dr. Mike Nofsiger and Benjamin Cromie for their guidance and mentorship throughout the duration of this project, Mike Mason and the Biosystems Engineering Machine Shop for their support in building our frame assembly, and Dr. Dierig and the Brisbane Wyuli Research Farm for their willingness and cooperation with us to visit and test at their facility. And thank you viewers for your attention during this presentation and everything you've done to support the College of Engineering and the Senior Design Program.